violence, combat, competition. It's in our blood. It's in our nature to test our skills and seek out victory by any means necessary. You are about to witness a competition like no other. 36 amateur fighters in three weight classes will do battle in a grueling league, fighting for points and a chance to be crowned champion. With so many variables, few things are certain. One will rise, many will fall, and no one's getting paid. The lightweight division starts its journey tonight. Speed and agility are key, but to make a good first impression, they'll have to be just as violent as they are fast. Competition, it's in our blood. And tonight, that blood will be spilled as these warriors fight to survive among the global Mega Fist 12. The Nougaty Center in Branson, Missouri is alive and well with excitement. This is the Global Mega Fist 12 and we feature the lightweights in this episode number three. My name is Derek Osceola. I'm joined by my side by the color commentator, Lucille Cramblecorn. Great night of fights. Great to have you here again. Great to, great to be back, Derek. Uh, lightweights are always entertaining. They're, they're small, they're fast. It's going to be a lot of high pace action inside the cage, this octagonal-like structure. It's going to be outstanding. I can I can just tell already. And you know, we, we, we have so much excitement, so much, so much to go through. We're going to go through it right now. Our main event, first of all, of course, the rules. For those unfamiliar with Global Mega Fist 12, these are amateur fighters. So the rounds are a little shorter, two and a half minute rounds, 150 seconds counting down to zero. A 10 point must scoring system is effect. Of course, no to the groin, no hitting the back of the head, no harsh insults because you can't take them back. And all fights scored based on aggression, damage control, and the ability to complete a Sudoku puzzle with a pen and no eraser should we go to the judge's dec decision. And uh, we've actually had one decision so far. And, uh, you know, so it's very possible that we'll actually get down to that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot of time to work with. So, uh, you know, typically in a fight, you might see some some body work, something to drain a, an opponent's stamina. But that doesn't uh, that doesn't take into account, you know, these short, short rounds. So, yeah, that Sudoku skill is going to play a, a heavy part in some of these fights, I'm sure. And of course, the difficulty of having to complete it while wearing the mixed martial arts gloves makes it difficult to hold the pen. That much more difficult. Our main event tonight, as the lightweights get their tournament started, it's Zeke Apnea, who, of course, is being forced to stay up even later uh, thanks to his energy drink sponsorship, unable to get any sort of sleep. He takes on Trevor Sereno, our guidance counselor with, uh, well, looks like a lot of, uh, I guess, interesting tattoo art on him, but uh, should, be a, should be a great, great... Uh, Main event that I believe is in Group B. Again, uh, these two, the D12 fighters split up into two groups, A and B. So our main event, Sereno and Apnea, should be a good one. Absolutely. Um, you know, Apnea, uh, he's looking a little tired, but sometimes that belies, you know, uh, an entirely calm presence, and you you can just kind of get into an easy rhythm um, when you're, you know looking a little sleepy. Sereno, um, I don't know much about those tattoos. You know, it's, uh, I mean, you, you're not really supposed to ask about people's tattoos. That's their choice. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, we're going to completely ignore the fact that the letters M and S are right, uh, right below his neck. I'm sure that's just uh, some sort of initials for something. Continuing into uh, group B, we have Kale. Be... Go ahead. I was going to say he might be from Mississippi, for that's all we know. very possible. I'm sure that, I'm sure that's, I'm sure there's just as easy an explanation as that. Uh, a, a very uh, big battle of styles here. Kale Howard 
our vegan activist taking on beginner sword house the renaissance fair enthusiast i mean it's a uh, it's it's a true battle of meat is murder versus meat is a giant turkey leg i eat at the renaissance fair yeah um i mean you don't see a ton of very high level uh vegans in mixed martial arts um whether that's uh you know an issue of protein deficiencies or you know just having a mind on oh these gloves are made of out of leather and it, it's distracting but you know at an amateur level uh i think the playing field is so even that uh howard might have a chance of, of defeating swordhouse well, it should be very interesting it's a, definitely a different uh, a battle of body types uh, we'll see that when that comes up later in the evening uh the other group b fight we will see i believe it is what's going to open things up for us rob lynn canada's most successful and voted voted Canada's best pickpocket, the Goblin himself, Rob Lynn, taking on the age and experience of Jim Rat Vern Wintergreen. It's age versus ex it's age and experience versus youth and agility. It's uh it's an age old battle. It's going to be a good one. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of times in a, a longer fight, you know, all those muscles can can just suck the oxygen right out of you. But in, in these short rounds, you know, Wintergreen's strength advantage might really, you know, prove itself tonight, uh, you know, with his, his big, powerful muscles. Yeah, of course, he's he's the, quite the gym rat, even in his old age, our oldest competitor. Switching gears, we'll head over to Group A. This is the other side of the of the uh, of the lightweight division. JC Switcher taking on Eddie Andromeda. And uh, you may have to blink twice to make sure you don't think you're watching Freddie Mercury. You're watching the, the front man of a Queen cover band, Eddie Andromeda, as he faces a living mannequin, JC Switcher. Not much we can really... Uh, uh, not too familiar with the concept of the living mannequin, but I guess he just models clothes. Uh, but he's alive and not made of plastic. Yeah, uh, that's just, uh, you know, I mean, you got to make ends, ends meet in this terrible late stage capitalism hellscape we live in. But, uh, you know, Fred Andromeda, um, you know, I, I spoke with him earlier and he said, don't stop me now. I'm I'm winning this this whole thing. Well, it should be exciting. He's hoping that he can be a killer queen. Indeed, uh, another uh, another group a battle coming up for here is Charlie Valentine, the Oklahoma Cupid. Looking to be, uh, well, he's he's not being a matchmaker this time. He's having a match made for him, taking on Rear Sergeant Val Gibbs. Uh, bit bit of an interesting title. I'm not I'm not too familiar with the Rear Sergeant title, but uh, uh, far be it from me to uh, to discredit a man uh, who has clearly served our country, uh, w w which is absolutely a fact and uh, not at all something that has been fabricated. Yeah, I'm not sure what branch of the armed forces uh, Gibbs has served in, um, you know, but most of them do have at least a rudimentary uh, unarmed combat system that they teach. And, you know, he's going to have to draw on that um, to, to defeat Valentine. Well, it's definitely going to be uh, interesting to see if it happens. It's uh, well, we don't know much about about uh, about the rear sergeant himself, but uh, he keeps very close to chest. But we'll see how he can fight. That'll be a fight later tonight. And, of course, the other Group A fight, Ruben Fondant taking on Miroslav Florislava. Ruben Fondant, uh, the downtrodden baker, uh, is looking to, to maybe extract some revenge, maybe vanilla extract some revenge uh, for all the cakes that he has to watch be destroyed by children at birthday parties. The effort he puts into it, he gets to actually destroy something rather than create it tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, any baker, you know, is is relying heavily on a lot of precision and, you know, just just snapping out punches precisely can uh, can really help a lot. You know, just hitting the target over and over again, just just like hitting the right, uh, you know, bake time on those cakes uh, that, that might play a factor in Fondant's uh, fight here tonight. No doubt about it. And here we go. This is. This is our opening fight. We're going to go to it just in a moment as we head down to the octagon-like structure cage side. Rob Lynn taking on Vern Wintergreen. This is the first fight of the lightweight Global Mega Fist 12, and it's starting right about now.
old age. Fern Wintergreen wearing a little bit more clothes than we're used to seeing uh, when we see him in the locker room. But uh, still wearing about as little as he's allowed to wear in the cage. himself, the Goblin Rob Lynn, voted Canada's most, uh, Canada's best pickpocket. It's an interesting thing to see, and uh, you know, not not usually something that 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 gets voted upon, but uh, I guess I guess they have Yelp reviews for for pickpocketing now. Yeah, I, I would expect a, a pickpocket is something that, uh, you know, you don't want to be uh, given any accolades for, uh, because I assume that means you're you're known to be a pickpocket, you might have gotten caught a few times. Yeah, I, I agree, but I, I guess maybe that's just the, an idea of how how uh, how kind and how welcoming Canada is. As a, uh, as a nation, they just want to, they want to uh, renown this man, but uh, I, I guess, you know, if you're looking out for him, you know, maybe he's that good, but... Uh, we're gonna see how that can translate to this. Obviously, all that time in the gym for Wintergreen. A lot of upper body strength, he's very well toned, but it's not always the same sort of muscles that you have to train for a fight. Rob Lynn, he's gonna be wiry, he's gonna be small. Yeah, uh, Wintergreen, you know, with that, that big height disadvantage, is gonna have to, you know, really dip down. You, you know, utilize those, uh, those squat techniques, lunges, to, to just get under uh, Lin's punches and kicks and, and just land his blows or get the takedown as, as he was looking for earlier. He's definitely looking to get into the clinch. Again, just no idea of personal space. Hanging out naked in the locker room, doing that thing where he puts one foot up on the bench and talks to you. You know, he's gonna be he's gonna be making use of the fact that, again, these are, this is the first ever time these gentlemen, all 12 tonight, will be fighting in an octagon-like structure, so there's going to be a lot of things none of them are used to, and it's a time to make that, use that to your advantage as Wintergreen could be just invading a lot of personal space. Yeah, he's he's keeping everything tight, even on the bottom. He's, uh, you know, he's inviting that, that closeness. He's, he's allowing uh, both men's smells to in intermingle in strange ways. It's, uh, it's kind of it, it can make someone uncomfortable if they're not used to it. I mean, it's making me uncomfortable right here at cage side, no doubt about that. But, but, but Lynn, Lynn knows how to, he, Lynn knows how to get very close and in and uh, and personal without even being detected. That is the thing. He's he's you know to be a pickpocket, you have to you have to get in, get your goods, and get out. Absolutely, and he's uh, he's landing some good punches from this uh, sprawled out position as. As Wintergreen keeps looking for that, you know, that reactive takedown off, off the turtle position. He's pushing forward, no doubt about that. He is uh, he's stubborn, as as one would expect in his old age. Stubborn, but persistent, and uh, probably has been in a lot of scraps in his in his youth. But again, nothing quite like a mixed martial arts combat with 10 seconds left in round number one. It's been very active for both fighters. Absolutely. Um, you know, we haven't seen the Sudoku ah, ah, results ah, yet, ah, but I would have to edge that first round to uh, to Lin. He did a little bit more on the bottom. He he had some okay. some good body uh, kicks uh, when the fight was standing. No doubt about that. It's going to the second round again, as we'll explain it in just a bit. Six points for a win in the first round. Five up for grabs here in the second round. As we take a look to see how that round shake, shook out. Vern Wintergreen went for the takedown from the very beginning. Is, uh, and, uh, but I, I think the striking battle went to Lynn, and uh, Lynn knew how to, uh, Good. Okay. Lynn definitely knew how to counter and how to control the fight. Let's see how it happens. Let's see how the, how the cardio, again, 
Are you this in? is a very long Are you time. In? Two and a half minutes does yeah. not sound that long, but it is an eternity in there when you're not used Let's to go, it. Go, guys, fight. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, essentially think about holding your breath for two and a half minutes and, uh, you know, if, if you've never fought before, that's kind of what it can what it can feel like. You know, just an overwhelming pressure. And, you know, Lin, you know, giving up that takedown, he's got a, he's got a cut on the brow line. I don't know if that's uh, affecting his, his vision too badly. But. Or just affecting him mentally. The, the minute you notice that you're bleeding and you're not used to it, that's, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, pickpocketry, uh, whatever his art would be, uh, maybe does have a little bit of a danger element to it. But uh, he, uh, he's, he seems to be under control, working out of the guard of, of Wintergreen. Yeah, win Wintergreen, you know, not that... You know, you don't see a lot of uh, kind of stocky guys, you know, his his body type really looking for a lot of submissions off their back, but he clearly doesn't know, uh, you know, anything to do other than just hold on and, uh, you know, hope to maybe kind of use his prodigious strength to to change positions with a, a big buck or a sweep. Yeah, it does make you wonder if the, uh, you know, when you talk to the old naked guy at the gym, if he's aware that you're make, that he's making you uncomfortable, maybe Wintergreen is aware of that and he's using that to his advantage, but it's not really bothering Rob Lynn at the moment. They're standing back up halfway through round two. And you got to see if fatigue is going to start wearing in on these, but Wintergreen gets a great takedown. Yeah, he timed that perfectly. And, you know, that... He's getting some some decent ground and pound in, but uh, Lin is well. Just as I say, Lin's you know defense is isn't bad. He uh, he gives up full mount, which you never want to do that. Not at all. And, and again, it's it's Wintergreen's. It seems to be his bread and butter. He just keeps going for that technique, that takedown. And what a what a transition from Lin. I don't even know. Oh, big knee, big knee oh, to the face. Big, oh, big that just hurt that that, that, that old man's jaw. Oh God. It is definitely, definitely over by TKO Rob Lynn. A split second is all it took. And he brought a knee up to the jaw. And arthritis was not going to be a problem for Lynn. But there are going to be sore bones around the facial structure of Vern Wintergreen after this one. Yeah, that that takedown attempt was, was pure desperation and... And you know, Lin, he uh, he showed the wherewithal to to launch that knee straight up the middle into Wintergreen's face, rearrange all of his bones, and finish this fight. Again, after all that, so many attempts of the takedown, it was only a matter of time before Lin caught wise to it and just landed a brutal knee and takes five big points to get his campaign started for a second round win. What a win for Lynn on that one, the goblin himself. What a great win. We've got another fight coming up. We're just gonna keep things rolling right along. Coming up next, Ruben Fondant and Miroslav Borislava, the hot-footed man versus the Oh, the downtrodden baker. It's coming up. Separate cake that was only designed for the children to smash. 
And so when I see the cake smash, that's all I think of. And I think about how Ruben Fondant would feel so very saddened by a waste of good cake. Uh, I mean, I'm saddened by a waste of good cake, but I, you know, usually don't have a hand in making it, so fondant, I can't imagine. I imagine whenever an, an order is coming in for an additional cake that is only going to be, like, just broken apart and not even eaten and savored or even, or even, uh, marveled at as a, uh, you ready? as a work of art, then that would just enrage and Let's sadden fight. him. Let's see if he can channel it against the man with the hot foot. So hot, it has suffered horrible burns. You can see how quickly he's moving. Miroslav Florislava in the white. The singe marks on the shorts, the bandages on the feet. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure if that might have been some uh, some sort of infection that, uh, you know, might have been causing that burning sensation, but, you know, he had to have been cleared by uh, you know, the Missouri Athletic Commission to, to step inside this octagon structure, so it's it's clearly not something like that. Some sort of, yeah, I, I can't really speak upon the Missouri Athletic Commission, uh, mostly because the less, the less, less conversations that we have with them, the better. Uh, most glorious Mr. Naga has, has, has a guy that, is, that, that handles them, and uh, yeah. we, we, were, we were specifically instructed just to kind of not answer any questions when asked. Nonetheless, first minute in, this is uh, very much a striking battle. Forislava throwing kicks constantly, just anything to, to ease the pain of his, his aching feet as they are touching the canvas. And, and Fondon is just looking to completely batter his opponent with his, uh, his heavy punches. Down about that, he is looking to put the beat on Forislava. And they're just standing in the pocket and throwing at you. This is the this is the striking battle that that we are we are more accustomed to see from these from these amateurs who have never had a fight in their life before. What a spinning kick by Florislav! I don't know if that was just out of pain or pain relief or if he he may have seen something on television. I don't know where that comes from. Yeah, uh, I I tried to talk with him. Um, but he would not uh, sit down for any kind of interview. He kept pacing, and uh, after just a handful of questions, he, he left to ice his feet. So I couldn't get anything about, you know, why he even entered this tournament, what oh drove him to martial arts. Oh, oh my God! Well, it wasn't, well, I guess tasting defeat via the knee is Ruben Fondant. And he is being helped up by our referee. A brutal, vicious knee strike. Square to the nose and jaw, and he is out. I believe Mr. Fondant will be, have to be drinking any cakes he uh, consumes for the next couple of weeks. We're gonna have to check out his, see what he is. Uh, <clears throat> See if, he, if he's going to be okay, but Miroslav, Florislava, what a an emphatic win! Six points for Miroslav, Florislava, but not without a bit of damage. That eye is starting to swell shut. He's going to want to get that taken care of. But six points puts him top of the tables in Group A so far. What a what a start to our. What a start to our evening! It's been it's been a, a knockout and a TKO. Back to back uh, knees. The knees the knees have it. I think is what it is. And uh, again, just shows just shows uh, that maybe these fighters uh, they pick up a little something, even though they're amateurs. There's always a chance to learn. That is the thing, you know. When you're learning something, you just don't know what you don't know, and so you're willing to try something out. Coming up next, we have Charlie Valentine taking on Rear Sergeant Val Gibbs. We're gonna get to that in just a moment. Before we do, we're gonna go ahead and give you all a bit of a taste of an explanation of how the Global Mega Fist 12 is going to function. If you're not familiar with GMF 12, this is gonna explain how this format is going to happen. The Global Mega Fist 12 is a grueling competition like nothing ever seen before in mixed martial arts. First, 
The 12 fighters are drawn at random into two groups of six fighters each. Each fighter will face off against the other five in their group. A win is worth three points, while a draw is worth one. In addition, bonus points are awarded for how fast a fight is won. Winning in the third round is worth four total points, a second round win is worth five, and finishing a fight in the first round gets you six points in all. After all five rounds of competition, the two fighters who finish in last place are relegated from Global Mega Fist 12 and must earn their way back in next season. They will be replaced by two fighters from the Hyper Fist qualifying tournament. The two fifth place fighters will be matched up against two more fighters from the Hyper Fist qualifiers with the winners earning their spot in next season's Global Mega Fist 12. The top two fighters from each group advance to the semifinals, where the first place fighter from each group will take on the second place fighter from the other. The winners of these fights will do battle for the championship. It all comes down to one thing. Win and win fast. And the title of Global Mega Fist 12 champion awaits. Supposed to respect a man in uniform, Rear Sergeant Val Gibbs has given. Well, we're not sure what he's given, but he's given something to his country, and he is uh, receiving an, an unquestioned ovation tonight. Valentine is used to making. He's going to be matching up with Val Gibbs as the Oklahoma Cupid. Looking to not just find love, he's looking to find six big points with a win tonight. Tail of the tape has them relatively, uh, well, relatively even. Only an inch of reach advantage for Rear Sergeant Gibbs. Charlie Valentine do not, do not underestimate. This man from Oklahoma. He is persistent, especially when it comes to finding people dates. I imagine that translates pretty well. Are you ready? He's, uh, Are you he's ready? usually trying to help people hit it off, and now he's about to get it on. And he is a uh, quick touch of the gloves. And they go right to it. Green for Gibbs, pink for Valentine. And, uh, Shooting yeah, he is, and uh, I guess used to uh, used to bodily contact. And he's trying to. Valentine uh, quickly slicing through uh, the ground game of a get. <clears throat> oh, but in a reversal. Yeah, it, it does kind of question if, if Gibbs is a veteran of the military. He does have some hand-to-hand -hand combat experience, though it may not be in a competitive, professional manner, as again, this is amateur mixed martial arts. Uh, yeah, it should prove just... there's some sort of uh, there's some sort of experience there. Yeah, he might just be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, armed forces boxing, you know, participant, uh, and not have much in the way of a, uh, you know, a full, uh, hand and ground fighting kind of background. Most certainly, with more certainly a, a, a possibility. Uh, I mean, again, you know, the only thing we are certain of about Rear Sergeant Val Gibbs is that he's absolutely a veteran in in the armed forces in some branch of the military. 
Uh, there's no way to doubt that whatsoever. However, we're just seeing him kind of holding on, and there's a, there's a key lock attempt from, from Valentine. Some might call it a top wrist lock, a key lock. You know, there's, I'm sure there's a, a Japanese name that I'm forgetting, but it's a, it's a shoulder lock, and it's it's dangerous if, uh, if you really know what you're doing, but um, it doesn't look, yeah, it didn't look like you had it. He's going for it. Just a bit of... Um, a bit optimistic for Valentine, but again, that's kind of how he treats how he treats all of his clients. Always optimistic that there is somebody out for them, and uh, well, it just shows that Rear Sergeant Gibbs had him out for a split second, but almost seemed like he didn't know how to handle it too well, which is uh, a bit surprising for someone again in the uh, in the armed forces. That yeah, seems like a prone uh, position to be taking advantage of, and now he is in that prone position. He, he might be unfamiliar fighting someone without, you know, a, a, a K-bar or, or at least a bayonet at his hand. So, Fair enough. you know, going from, going from fully armed to unarmed combat is could be a shock to the system. No doubt about that. Truly a hero deserving of our respect, unquestioning. And that's going to go to round two as they survive the first 150 yeah. seconds. The two and a half minutes are up. And uh, we're seeing, we're gonna see as fatigue starts to set in. Again, you know, a lot of times, you know, when, you, when you're, again, speaking about how the armed forces train for combat, it's usually these quick explosive maneuvers. You know, you wanna put down your opponent and, ne and neutralize or immobilize him immediately. You're not just constantly struggling for a strong two and a half minutes straight. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, a decorated uh, veteran like Gibbs, I mean, it's it's probably been years since uh, his days of basic training where he would, you know, run 20 or 30 miles a day with a fully loaded uh, rucksack. But that cardio should still be there somewhere deep down if he can if he can just access those those reserves. Okay, fighters, are you ready? Are you ready? No doubt about that, but Valentine Let's again... Fight up against it, looking to make use of his matchmaking abilities, his persistence, and just his 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 effort and his hard work. And you know, the thing about a matchmaker, I mean, they see, they look for the best qualities in people, but that, that means they can also see a lot of the weaknesses in people, and, uh, you know, if, if uh, Valentine sees some weaknesses in Gibbs, he's going to exploit them. And he seems to have been able to find his way into Mount and lands a strong punch, but Gibbs just goes fight or flight and just starts struggling and is able to get out of it for a split second, but he is just trying to neutralize the head of Valentine, hold him down, keep him from posturing up. These little shots uh, don't look like much, but they definitely can add up, and sometimes they can add up real quick without without any uh, big changes happening to the, uh, the opponent taking those punches. Understood, and uh, you can see there's a lot of, da you see that adds up, the damage, Valentine just, again, like Cupid hitting hitting a target with an arrow, he is just, there's a target right on the brow of Gibbs, just cutting him open, and that's gonna make it harder and harder for him to see. Yeah, uh, and you know, just loss of blood can weaken opponents, I mean, there's, Oh! Big ground and pound shots. Looking for an arm bar. This is an interesting strategy. He, he, he stuns him. Clearly that punch hurt him from the mount of position. Gives it up to go for the arm bar. This is an interesting strategy to see from Valentine, but maybe he smells some sort of weakness. And he got it. Broke the grip. Forced the tap. Outstanding work by Charlie Valentine. What a big win for Valentine. Five big points. And again, nothing to be taken away from the, the, the undisputable military background of Rear Sergeant Val Gibbs. A valiant effort indeed. And it's only just one fight in. There are four to go. these fighters, but Valentine, a big five points. It's in at the very least in the top half after one. Let's see how much yeah. that means to him. Yeah, it's important, to, you know, it's it's just the first fight, you know, for, for these guys, but it's important to, to start off strong and, and get that win and just uh, 
you know, build momentum instead of trying to create it from, from the bottom. Not about that. And we were talking about this one earlier. Cale Howard, Beginner's Swordhouse. One of the most intriguing fights on tonight's card. It's coming up in just a moment. And uh, we're going to see uh, what, what, which side wins out in this one. Gone his chainmail or a pair of mixed martial arts shorts and gloves instead of a mace or perhaps a uh, flail. The Guinness Sword House wants to celebrate with a turkey leg. speak for the t-shirt that's being worn by Cale Howard. I, I don't think there are any studies that link meat to autism. However, uh, again, he, he is a vegan and he is, uh, he is spreading his plant-based love to anyone willing to listen. And uh, it's a very interesting battle. Uh, the reach and their height are not as differing as one would think. But body type alone should tell you that there could be a difference in style between these two. Yeah, uh, you know, Howard is a little bit shorter, but, um, you know, if, if he's got a speed advantage, that can, that can be the, all the difference in this bout. Let's go, guys. Fight. Well, there, is, there is definitely a... a there's definitely a... Um, a, a split of opinions, or uh, uh, the crowd is definitely a little uh, on edge about Howard. Uh, very off-putting, very, uh, very militant in his veganism. But uh, you know, it's, it's he's militant, and uh, Swordhouse is uh, historically militant in his Renaissance fair. And, oh, goes in with a kind of gallops forward with a Superman punch. Yeah, it's uh, surprising, uh, you know, for for the Renaissance Fair man to take from the world of comic books like that. No doubt about that. I don't really see a lot of connection between uh, the attendees of both, but he is landing a good hook. And maybe there is a bit something to hand-to-hand -hand combat, maybe stage combat uh, for the typical shows they show at a Renaissance Fair. Maybe he's uh, picked up a little thing or two from watching them. Or maybe just, you know, uh, at the forge with his with his blacksmith's hammer, he just those big heavy blows just rattling Howard's head. There's a lot of options again. It's just a lot of elbow grease and upper body strength. Again, maybe he's just pretending that he's got a shield in his left hand and just swing it with the might of, of, a, uh, of a brave armor clad knight. He is just using that at size advantage and pushing Howard up against the cage. Howard had to just get himself out of there. He's giving up a lot of size. Yeah, Howard is... I, he doesn't look to be moving too badly, but I think he's still in kind of a desperation mode from, from all these heavy punches. That left hook that happened about, about 30 to 60 seconds ago. Oh, spry kicking action from, from Swordhouse. Wasn't expecting that necessarily, but... Well, Howard is, is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I think just like he would approach people on the street during his many protests and displays, he is just up and in the face of the man who would love to have a turkey leg and eat it right in front of Cale Howard. Yeah, um, I've, the thing I've never been quite sure about veganism, are corn nuts considered vegan? Well, are they because... corn? Are they nuts? I'm not sure what they are. I think if if we could get a definitive answer, that might kind of uh, push the tide in, in Howard's favor. If he endorsed, 
you know, the, the fans to, to enjoy corn nuts. Again, uh, okay, practically the state, here, the state the snack food and of Missouri. Back, uh, people of Missouri okay. love their corn seen, nuts, no doubt about it. Punches now, and, uh, right? we, we can't hold back. Very happy to, to, to have them have them sold here. I don't quite get them, but they seem to love them. Cannot keep them on the shelves here in Missouri. Again, a state known for its refined tastes. Loves their corn nuts, and that was the big uh, two. It was two hooks right one after the other. That really Be just there. hurt Finish Kale Howard. Fight. You see it might have opened him up it. underneath the eye. Yeah, it looks like both eyes are uh, showing a little bit of damage. Uh, it's something to, to look out for, ready? and unfortunately might be something Howard can't look out for if his, uh, his vision is compromised. Let's go, guys. Fight. Let's see how... Uh, Let's see if Beginner's Swordhouse can treat this like the archery games at the fair and go for the bullseye that is the, uh, well, the, the cut under the eye. I understand that Kale Howell going for that clinch, but Swordhouse just too, too powerful. Was a, just use the momentum to just get himself out of there. And again, a clinch fight doesn't seem like that will behoove Howard in any way. He seems like he's just being overpowered. No, but I, I think he's not interested in any kind of hooving uh, in any capacity. That's fair. I guess that would, uh, that would be very much a, uh, a no-no for him. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, Howard again, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I think just using the, the Global Mega Fist 12 as a platform to spread his veganism beliefs and, and try to, I guess, I don't want to say convert, but to try to get people to understand uh, the, the, the importance of a plant-based lifestyle. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's understandable. Uh, cage fighting has, has long been a, a source of, you know, pushing activism uh, uh, for all sorts of causes. Um, you know, from, from some of the early pioneers, like, uh, Johnny the Big Pillbug uh, Smith, who advocated for um, barefoot being illegal. Um, oh, and Jesus, that punch! Well, I think I think Kel Howard might want to take a, a. I guess it'll just be a bag of frozen peas. I guess the old school method of putting a cold frozen steak right on the on the uh, on the on the face may not be the 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 best solution but i think he's going to have a bag of frozen vegetables yeah he's, strapped to maybe his face a, tomorrow maybe a portobello i i, I guess that know. would be the uh, that would be the uh, the option i guess is the uh, yeah the portobello tends to be the the that's the replacement for for the steak or for like the burger i think yeah yeah the get his sword house big power shot He's gonna be he's gonna be a tough, tough opponent for anybody in this tournament. But get his sword house. Heading to the Renaissance there with five big points for a second round victory. What a fight that was right there. And uh two more to go at this point. These are we are getting through these. Hot and heavy, fast and furious. Our next fight coming up right now, JC Switcher, Eddie Andromeda. It's the, uh, well, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, battle of the front men. It's the front man of a queen cover band versus the man in front of the store modeling the, modeling uh, the, uh, the wares. And uh, it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting one, I think, uh, we we'll see two two fast and wiry fighters, as we tend to see at 155. But uh, should be a good fight. Yeah. Uh, the again, the whole mannequin thing is is confusing to me. But um, you know, I I try not to judge. Uh, you know what these fighters like to like to do in their their spare time away from the cage. Well, no doubt we're going to get to that in just a moment. We're going to actually talk to you about what you're going to be seeing 
next week, next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, here on this channel, August 14th, we bring back the heavyweights for their second fight of the group stage. A lot of great fights. Little 42, the answer, taking on Wandering Mo Volt. 42 has five points so far. The all-seeing Zoltan and Nicholas Polka, both on zero points, looking to get their first win. And Fritz Milgram and Lonnie Fescue, five for Milgram, six for Fescue. That is a fight where the winner can really take a big lead in Group A. On the other side of it, Gabe Donahue and Damian Adder, both of them on zero points. Dr. Igor Tonic on six, Guff Magnuson on zero, and Lehman and Rodenta, Oliver Lehman, with a fast first round uh, TKO win on episode one. He's got six points, taking on Dan Rodenta with five. Lucy, are there any, uh, I mean, obviously we have the ones where the, the, the top half of the of the groups are facing off one another in Milgram and Fescue and Lehman and Rodenta. Is there any one that's really catching your eye in this one? Uh, yeah, th those two fights are going to be good. It's going to really, you know, put the the rest of groups A and B on notice. But, um, you know, Igor Tonic was really impressive uh, in, in the first episode. And, you know, I think he's going to, if he doesn't get at least five points uh, next week, I would be surprised because he just looked devastating in his first round matchup. And then, you know, you got the guys who are on zero. It's it's only week two for them, but it's really make or break it because you can't uh, you can't go down that deep in the hole. Yeah, it is. It is, of course, also the the interesting thing that we're going to see over the course of episodes four through six as we get the second fights of these fighters is. Now that it's not new to them, now that they know what it's like to have been in a fight, how does that change things? I can't imagine it's actually going to change too much, but nonetheless, a good point. Dr. Igor Tonic had, uh, has six points after a big win over, a big knockout win over Gabe Donahue. That should be a heck of a fight coming up in next week. That's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern on this channel. And we hope to see you there. But we have two more fights to go to. And we're heading to our second to last fight right now. him now it is Eddie Andromeda he's got quite the look he's got quite the lean, lean stature and a little bit of a cartwheel Such a thing for Andromeda to have to overcome. A six inch height difference. Lucy, how much is that gonna really affect Eddie Andromeda? It uh it really depends on what he's looking to do in this uh, octagon like structure. If he wants to sit back and strike, it's it's gonna be bad for him, but if if he's smart enough to uh, you know, time when You're Switcher's right. throwing You're and right. then duck under and either grapple or land his own big Let's shots fight. and get out of the way, you know, he's he's gonna have a good time, but um We'll just see how uh, how well he's prepared for this this contest. No doubt about that. Andromeda in the black, Switcher in the gray. Interesting. Again, we're talking talk about how the cardio of these fighters spinning back elbow. 
again, just a little bit of a showman is uh, Andromeda, what you'd expect from him. But Switcher, again, we talk about how, how the cardio is a test. You said it's like holding your breath for two and a half minutes straight. And, and I gotta imagine, Switcher, it seems like he can excel in that and knocks down Andromeda immediately. Andromeda's gonna have to do something on the, you know, either either just hold and hope for a stand-up or... It's it's hard to really do a lot with someone that much bigger on top of you for, for any amount of time. No doubt about that. And uh, Switcher, again, we were talking about how he, he's got the potential, I think, from what we know of him as a living mannequin. You know, forced to stand in a position all day and uh, hold a pose. You gotta imagine his cardio is, it gives him the ability to last longer in this fight. And the fact that he can just move around might just be a welcome yeah. change to him. Plus it'll it'll help him work on, uh, you know, developing patience. He's, he's not gonna just go rushing in crazy looking for a finish if, if Andromeda's hurt. He's gonna pick his shots carefully and, and throw when he knows to throw the, the devastating punches. Sometimes if your nature is just to wait patiently, then that translates to this, and oh my oh god, my he found god. that spot! Oh, that is sickening. Goodness. That man is not moving. That is... I, 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 I think I Andromeda see. might have just become a, uh, a non-living mannequin. He is, uh, that is potentially the case. Um... Well, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to make light of, of the man he he emulates, but I think Eddie's dead. Big uppercut and a follow-up hook as he's falling. I think he was already unconscious the minute that uppercut landed. I don't think the hook mattered. No, I mean it. It mattered for his long-term brain health, but for the the actual fight, no, it did not. Oh, I think it was over the minute the uppercut landed. What a win! What a scary win for J.C. Switcher. This man is going to be a serious competitor here in the lightweight division. And we saw the knee earlier that, that floored Ruben Fondant. I think that might have been even scarier. Yeah, um, especially with that, that follow-up uh, punch on the ground. That, 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 those three strikes were uh, devastating. It is getting to be time for our main event, the final fight, a group B fight. Here it is, Zeke Apnea and Trevor Sereno. Representing the second city of Chicago, Trevor Sereno, the school guidance counselor. Is he going to need any sort of uh, guidance here? He's looking for a big win in this first fight. Character, this Zeke Apnea. You see, he's he, he's been he lives above what apparently is considered an underground fight club, and has somehow lucked himself into an energy drink sponsorship, which again is just further keeping him up at night. I don't know the last time the last time he's uh, he's had a good night of sleep, and it just you can tell. From, from the photo that we're seeing on our screen. Yeah, it's uh, it could be, you know, I mentioned earlier in the broadcast that that could just be calm and, you know, 
he, he could he could be at peace and, and tranquil Ready? with the upcoming fight. Ready? But if he actually is severely sleep deprived, um, that's just going to be devastating. I think we'll find out quickly into this bout what the case uh, actually is. I think he's actually wearing uh, the, he's wearing the boxer shorts he would sleep in. It looks like uh, and teal with polka dots that appears to be Sereno uh, uh, in. Uh, in a, uh, a royal blue that I'm sure has no significance of any sort. And just school, uh, school guidance counselor, not a lot beyond that information we have on Trevor Sereno. Uh, any sort of experience uh, of his of his youth, of his past is kind of just, he just doesn't really like to talk about it. Um, especially got defensive when I asked what the M and the S on his, uh, on his on his chest stood for uh, he immediately made sure it was covered up but again you know on display for the world to see Trevor Sereno oh nice leaping knee came out of nowhere Apnea had uh had some surprising energy I guess that's the uh that's like the second win they tell you about when you're tired and it just suddenly comes back in yeah. halfway through round one no sign of no sign of no sign of uh, slowing down from either fighters. Like they're both trading. Yeah, Serenio, you know, he had a he had a quick start to, to begin the fight, but uh, you know, it's it's a much more you know, I don't say a reserve pace because they're throwing a, a lot, but Serenio was I felt really looking to finish the fight in the first, you know, 20, 20 or thirty seconds. Yeah, it's almost like instinct takes over and he just wants to put an end to this fight immediately. And I imagine that probably comes from some sort of, uh, I'm sure that comes from school training, you know. In, in this day and age, unfortunately, you have to learn things like that. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's no other pretenses to that. But, uh... yeah. Oh, big, oh, big head, head kick. kick. Oh, he just cracks it aside, the, alongside the, the, the temple of apnea, and just maybe... Maybe he's finally getting put to sleep. But Sereno, I'm sure that's not the the nap he he anticipated or, or wanted. But you know, sometimes you got to take what you're given, and he was given a head kick. It sure was, and these are the punches that ended it. And Apnea just collapses through the canvas, almost as if to say, "Finally, finally, some rest." And uh, well, maybe the hospital bed that he gets. Uh, he spends uh, at least a little bit of time in, might be a little bit of a comfort for him. Just flopping to the ground, maybe the fatigue did come into factor. But I think it's still a very impressive win for Trevor Sereno. And not to take away anything from Sereno's win, but uh, you know, if Apnea has suffered a concussion, of course they will force him to stay awake during observation at the hospital. So. It, this might have actually uh, been the worst thing possible for oh, him. Oh, that's a good point, and I'm sure that test will be taking uh, taking effect. That's a very good point, uh, but that is our uh, that is the result. It is Sereno by first round TKO for six points. Let's go over our fights again tonight. He's talking about Group A, JC Switcher, perhaps with the most disgusting knockout of the night over Eddie Andromeda, Miroslav Floroslava. A close second over Ruben Fondant. And of course, Charlie Valentine, an armbar victory over Val Gibbs. A couple of fighters in Group A who know how to finish their fights. Yeah, there was a lot of violence on display. Um, you know, Floroslava, I didn't expect that out of him. It it took me by, I mean, it, I'm sure it took Fondant by even more surprise, but uh, a lot of a lot of violence packed into you know a, a very short uh, couple of fights no doubt about that and actually that is giving us quite the second round fight switcher versus Floroslava happens on episode six that's going to come on august 28th that's going to be a battle between two six point fighters uh, who both scored vicious knockouts that is going to be a great fight Right here on uh, in in a couple in three weeks time, as we head over to Group B, Serenio. We saw that just happening with the TKO victory. Beginner Swordhouse with a second round knockout, and Rob Lynn got us started with a win over Vern Wintergreen, and that's going to show how the lightweight standings are shaping up. 
Some interesting fights, some interesting fighters as well in Group B. Yeah, um, I mean, other than apnea, I felt that uh, most of the guys in Group B, even the, the ones that lost, you know, Wintergreen and Howard, they, they had a fairly decent accounting of themselves until they got finished. So, you know, Serenio obviously has, has a lot of power, um, but I think any of these guys can definitely uh, reverse that losing streak uh, next time up. They definitely have chances. Apnea, unfortunately, draws Beginnis Swordhouse, who looks like one of the most dangerous fighters in Group B. But we have Rob Lynn versus Trevor Sereno. Should be a good one, a wiry, uh, cagey fight. I think that'll be. Uh, might be get might be getting a little down and dirty. Uh, like gang warfare, indeed. And Vern Wintergreen versus Kale Howard. That is a big fight to watch, as that'll be one for the for. Uh, for, for two fighters that lost tonight to get their first points and to, to make a make a late charge into this tournament. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Wintergreen uh, is going to be full of protein powder. Uh, Howard, I'm, I'm sure, is full of, I guess, pea protein. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a uh, Some other a sort of powder, no fight. doubt, yes. Yeah. And uh, again, we hope that you join us next week, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, as always, for... Uh, episode four as we go to the second round for the heavyweight group stage there's the fights uh, again we talked about him earlier Dr. Igor Tonic versus Guff Magazine is the one that you're looking forward to seeing Lucille again I, I'm very excited to see what uh, what Fritz Milgram and Lonnie Fescue can do as both of them look very impressive in their debuts it becomes a matter of how do you rebound and how do you come back after tasting your first fight of your career? And uh, what a night of fights it's been tonight. I, I, it's, I've, I've certainly enjoyed myself. I, 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 we had a bunch of great finishes. Tremendous amount of finish. Well, of course, everything finished. Uh, great, great fights overall. Um, we thank everyone for, for stopping by. Had a little bit of a late start. There was a, a, a terrible. Uh, spillage of ice in the octagon-like structure that had to get cleaned up before anything could happen. Um, so thanks for, for sticking with us. Thanks for staying up so late. Um, next week is is going to be the the big boys. Some of, some of my favorites for you know uh, a couple of different reasons. I mean it's it's always fun to see heavyweights throw down. But um, this uh, this Global Mega Fist 12 tournament. I mean three weeks in, three weeks of of great fights, and it's just going to keep continuing. No doubt about that. Thank you, Lucille. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and tell you that we're going to thank you all for coming out tonight. We'll see you again. Again, we apologize for the late start. Thank you again to Lucille Cramble, Cramble Corn. Again, uh, Michael Oleander couldn't join us tonight on the uh, at the cage side. We hope to have him back again when the heavyweights take effect again. Uh, thank you all for checking us out. We hope that you uh, do... Uh, join us again we go to as this tournament progresses on and on this is only the first fight of these fighters careers they've got four more group stages uh group stage fights to go about and see how they take care of For lucille cramblecorn i'm Derek osceola thank you to most glorious and honorable mr naga for providing this global mega fist 12 and we'll see you next week at the global mega fist 12.